Thank you for joining us today. Here with me is my colleague Uwe Kraus. My name is Martin Klevenhagen. Our topic for today is automation. Go with the flow. How to avoid bottlenecks in your production. Uwe, you have been counseling our customers for more than 23 years now. Can you tell us why did you pick this topic? Thank you, Martin. How to avoid bottlenecks in your production is a wide topic. When customers look for a new laser cutting machine, they always compare first the capabilities of the laser machine. Lately, higher laser powers are available. In many cases, these machines increase the cutting capacity. Having a machine with 12 kilowatt was unthinkable 10 years ago. So the cutting machines get more and more productive. But what is happening after the cutting process? Usually cutting parts is just the beginning of sheet metal fabrication. So the flow of the parts within the company needs to be considered as well. Automation plays a key role for that. Do you think that increasing the overall productivity is the biggest motivator for automation? Yes, productivity is one big reason. But there are more and they can be just as significant for our customers. For example, increasing productivity, as you mentioned already, then saving costs by reducing overtime or manual work in night shifts. Third, reducing delivery times and reducing working capital costs by improving the door-to-door -door times. Helping workers to do less exhausting manual work and making the whole manufacturing process more transparent. In your experience, what is the most important thing to achieve all these improvements? The most important aspect is to synchronize every production step with each other. By the way, that's why the Trumpf production system was named Synchro years ago. Can you give us an example of what synchronizing means for laser cutting? Imagine a customer who cuts a lot of different sheets in various materials per day. We have to get an idea about the sheet run times. We need to know the average and the minimum sheet run time and how often is there a switch between different materials. Can we illustrate this with a customer example? Yes. Some time ago, we were in discussion with a Trumpf customer. Years ago, he started with a 4 kW CO2 machine with automation. Being a job shopper that never knows which job he will get the next day, he wanted to order a state-of-the-art 10 kW machine. This powerful machine seemed to be a promising solution for him. But here comes the tricky part. Over the years, his customer base has changed and we found out that about 60% of his production was now at 2 mm stainless steel instead of 6 mm a few years before. Let me guess, the sheet run times went down significantly, right? Exactly. And there is even more to the story. His old CO2 machine was connected to an automation system that was well integrated into his entire material flow. He was very happy with that system and wanted to keep it, so he just wanted to replace the laser machine. If he had bought the new 10 kW machine, his average sheet run time would have dropped below 2 minutes. The problem is, his existing automation had a cut-to-cut -cut time of 3 minutes. Wow, I'm just doing the calculation in my head. If he had bought this expensive machine, his automation would have cost him one third of the productivity potential already. Exactly. I just prepared that as a graph. Before, everything was okay, as the automation was quicker than the machine. In the new system, the machine would have had to wait for the automation. So what would be the better solution? For the 10 kW machine, we could have ordered our LiftMaster Compact. This automation has a total cut-to-cut -cut time of 90 seconds, everything included, even the pallet change. But for this particular customer, that was not an option due to the space and material flow reasons. So which solution did we offer in the end to that customer? A very cost-effective solution. We checked his nests and found out that the machine with only 6 kW was completely sufficient for his jobs. 
It even provided him a significant productivity increase compared to his previous CO2 machine, but with a much lower financial investment. So he invested in a new 6 kilowatt fiber machine and for the majority of sheets it still worked in sync with his existing automation. We can see that on this graph. It was completely equal. That is eye-opening. The machine with lower laser power saved him a significant amount of money and it fits perfectly to the material flow. Uwe, do you have any further suggestions? Yes, there is a trend that batch sizes are getting smaller and smaller. Some of our customers even have to face the so-called one-piece flow. That means customers nowadays have to deal with more frequent material changes as in previous years. In these cases, storage systems play an important role. For bigger storage systems, we have a specialized department at Trumpf. This department helps the customer from the first sketch of his factory layout to the installation of the whole system. Our colleague Sandra Datersen is part of this department. She is here today to share some project insights with us. Hello Sandra, thank you for joining us today. We have been talking about synchronizing laser cutting and automation. Can you tell us how this should be done with storage systems. Hello, Uwe and Martin. I'm happy to talk about that. When we talk to customers, synchronizing is one of the key elements that we consider. Within every storage system, there's a so-called pallet lift. This unit handles the transport of the pallets. So this unit is always needed when something is moving into or out of the storage unit. When we design a storage system for a customer, it is always a very individual and customized solution. Therefore, in every case, we clarify the individual needs. How many different material types does the customer use? How many machines are connected? How many loading and unloading stations are needed? But even with the best consideration, it can sometimes happen that occasionally the pallet lift becomes a bottleneck. However, there's another solution to this challenge, and that is the automation lift muscle store. You can see in this picture that the lift master store has access to four material pallets, so-called transfer shelves. The amount of these transfer shelves will be defined in advance, according to the customer requirements. That makes it less dependent on the pallet lift. The lift master store acts as an additional buffer. It makes sure the storage, automation and machines still work in synchronization. And the same is true for the finished parts pallets. We have at least two out of four of the transfer shelves at the LiftMaster store allocated to finished parts. That means that restoring the parts won't be a bottleneck either. Can you explain that a bit more and show us some examples? Sure. For instance, let us have a look at the LiftMaster Compact. After the machine has cut the sheet, the LiftMaster Compact is really quick in exchanging sheets of the same material type. But if there is a change of the material type, this adds up the storage pallet lift cycle two times. With a true store, this means up to more than three minutes. The cycle is not be needed if you work with a lift master store. And even if the lift master store cycle time is two times slower than the lift master compact one, in the overall process with the material, it will always be quicker. So, well, it is all about setting a focus either on productivity or flexibility. Introducing separating processes within the automation would be another example. You need a minimum of four pallets, loading, unloading part, unloading scrap, reserve, which makes the LiftMaster store the first choice over the LiftMaster Compact, because there we only have two positions, one for raw material and the other one for cut parts, including the skeleton. Or another use case would be cutting two different materials two pallets loading and two unloading, one reserve. But when you have almost no changes of material types in your job list, it makes more sense to go with a LiftMaster Compact. Again, it depends primarily on your cutting process time. Is it more than five minutes? Well, you are lucky, free choice. But keep in mind to think also of following processes like sorting, because every process which can be done automatically will save you non-value added production costs. Thank you, Sandra. So not only the laser machine and the automation have to be in sync, but also the automation and the storage system. Uwe, Sandra already mentioned customized solutions. 
Do you have to add something to that? Absolutely. I was hoping you asked that. In many cases, it is beneficial to use standardized modules when designing a system. But sometimes the customer asks for something completely unique and individualized. Trump has been doing these kind of projects for more than 40 years. And sometimes the solution was something very different than what the customer expected in the beginning. What does that mean? Well, sometimes the customer thought they need a laser cutting machine. But then it turned out that the best solution was a combined punch laser machine. That is a big advantage of Trump's broad portfolio. We take the customer's bigger picture into consideration. We can really think outside of the box. If you look at the value chain at a customer's site, laser cutting is usually just the beginning of the parts journey. Usually more production steps are added to the parts later on. For example, adding a thread or countersink. These steps are often done at separate machines, leading to high intermediate material buffer and further production risks. If one machine could integrate some of these steps, many things would improve. Not only the cost per part, but also the floor space requirements. I think it's time to illustrate that with some of the customer parts that you brought along. Look at this part. It is a gear lever for a machine tool. It was produced on a Trumatic 7000, a machine that combines laser cutting and punching. I see. If we only look at the laser cutting, I'm sure that a pure laser cutting machine would have cut it in less than half of the time. But the other steps would have been done on an additional machine, right? Exactly. This hole is very accurate, as of Isofit H8, or this thread with a countersink, and check out the embossed logo. All of this was done automatically on one machine. This part can even be sorted quite easily through the machine part flap. If the customers make full use of such a machine, it's basically a money printing machine. In the video clip, you just see the machine with the sheet master, its automation device. Okay, let's have a look at another sample part, please. This is a typical part in a machine to assemble electrical switches. Additional to its contour that are laser cut, there are two bends, some countersinks and a lot of holes which have been punched very fast and with high accuracy. If you would produce such a part on a 2D laser machine, all additional features would cause further production steps. And what about small batch sizes? Would you still suggest a combination machine for that, considering the tool setup, time and everything? Good point. But even small batch sizes don't change the big picture. Maybe a smaller combination machine can also do the trick. For example, a Dramatic 1000 fiber with a Thoughtmaster Compact. It does not always have to be the largest available machine when going for a combined laser cutting and punching. This video clip you just see now shows you how this machine works. Uwe, in your collection I am missing a true laser part. Didn't you bring something like that? <laughs> the part I now want to talk about was too heavy to bring along. That's why I show it to you on the next video clip.
You're right. I wouldn't want to carry such a heavy part either. It's amazing that even such a part can be picked out by the sorting device. What's it all about? This is our sort master, which is in this case combined with a true laser machine and a lift master store. The one Sandra just spoke about. The sort master can sort parts of up to 100 kilos. In order to do that, the cutting curves need to be wide enough. But thanks to Brightline Fiber, this is no problem at all for the laser machine. Let's continue with this part here. That looks very tricky. Maybe some of our visitors doubt that it can be cut and sorted automatically. The geometry is really challenging to get out of the remainder sheet. Yeah, this is really a tricky part. This one was produced with a True Laser Center 7030. Let's have a look on how it is manufactured. At a conventional machine, this would never work that easy. The inner contours would tilt and lead to a collision. What can we say about programming the part? Did it take a lot of time to create the program? That is the amazing thing. Not really. I talked to my colleague who created the program. In TrueTop's booth, this is only a few mouse clicks. For this machine, our program system has a high level of automated processes. So until now, we have given an overview about various machine and automation types. Let's show some customized solutions. Yes, our colleague Sandra will show us some real customer projects now. Sandra, it's your turn again. This first system was designed for a customer who wanted to integrate cutting, bending and welding into one fully automated system. Connecting our own machines with each other is daily business for us. What many people don't know, we are also able to connect third-party machines. In this picture, you can see how we did this with a welding cell. And here's another customer example. We connected two storage systems with each other. As you can see, the material is oscillating between two storage systems. Both storage systems are connected with a so-called pendolino. For safety reasons, we installed light barriers and a traffic light system. The best thing is, our software controls and manages everything. And here is the third customer example. This is a great example that a customized solution does not have to be very big and complicated. In this case, we connected a punching machine with a waste management system. Our customer can program where the scrap ships will go. So each material type is collected individually. One box for aluminium, one box for stainless steel, one box for mild steel. Wow! Thank you, Sandra. That are three amazing examples for customized solutions. So, Uwe, we have been covering a lot of ground today. We have been talking about clever automation and synchronous production. In your words, what should be the key takeaways for our customers? I think it comes down to three things. First, when you think about buying a new laser cutting machine, Keep in mind what is happening in your production after the cutting process. Synchronize the laser cutting machine with what comes next, especially with the automation and the storage system. Second, try to stay open-minded for new solutions. And third, look for the right consultants that understand your needs and can counsel you with a broad portfolio and years of experience we hope that we at Trumpf can be this partner for you. We would like to help you to avoid bottlenecks in your production. Our goal is to make you successful. Only then we can be successful together. Go with the flow. <laughs>